the card to the cloud. I heard the recording come on, so. Yep, good. How are you doing, Lance? Very good, thank you. Did uh, any of you guys watch the Olympic coverage? I know it's going on, but fans. It's just not as much fun since they don't allow doping. I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I did hear that the that fifteen year old girl that won the figure skating gold from Russia tested positive last week or so. So I don't know if they're gonna what they're gonna do about that. But have um, on that note, have any of you watched the documentary called Icar Icarus? I think oh. it's all about doping. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it's this amateur biker guy, and he, you know, after the whole Lance Armstrong thing and everything, he wanted to just do a bunch of research into um, doping and, like, how they were passing their drug tests and how hard it is and is there legitimate fairness across sports anymore because people are getting away with all this doping and everything. And so he, he contacts this doctor who is this Russian doctor and asks him if he'll help him with a doping routine and then help him pass drug tests. And he agrees to do it and he goes through it. And then half the documentary, it turns out that this is the same Russian doctor who was responsible for all the Olympic doping. And so then this huge investigation goes underway and it just, he, he elaborates on how they cheated in Sochi, and it is like unbelievable the lengths that they went to. Crazy. Yep, yep. Leave Russia in there, you'll always have some. You'll always have some doping. So. I've heard a lot of people recently say, "Just let everybody dope, and then it's fair across the board." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And oh well. Sad. Hey, Rachel. Did watch slope side uh, skiing last night. That's pretty awesome. I mean, some good tricks. It must have been the men's, yeah? Uh, it was women's. Oh, it was women's. I thought that already happened. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I was watching it last night. I don't know when it was. Yeah. Oh, true. <laughs> so, those, those, kids are, those kids are crazy. I'll yeah. tell you. Those kids are crazy. I have that view up the, on the top of the mountain looking down on that big old jump. I Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Scares me just sitting in my own oh, living room. I'm just going to. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Hello. <laughs> she must have some noise in her office or something. Sounds like she's busy. She probably got three meetings going on at a time. I know it. Single-handedly taking on the world. Oh, yep. There she is. Oh, wow. There she, is. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Good. I will give a couple more minutes. We have have one new member this year and so it would be nice if we could get him on for the beginning portion of the meeting how's it going good how are you <laughs> good hanging in there so Jared, I, just so you know, I sent out a, a, a message and I CC'd you on it. It was to the, our local homeless council. Our local homeless council is the Weber Morgan local homeless council. So, so just so you know, um, I copied you in on it and I copied Matt in on it just so that you guys were in the loop, if that makes sense. I saw that and I know Matt will be running with that. So appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. I just didn't want you thinking, what the heck is this lady doing? Most people think that anyway, but just wanted to explain. No, thank you. <laughs> All right, it's going to be quite the balancing act sharing my screen because I have like maybe a hundred different tabs open at a time. Oh, 
Okay, are you guys seeing the agenda? Fabulous. Oh, okie dokie. So we do have a quorum here, so that's good. Um, we can at least um, get some stuff done. So uh, we'll do the welcome and introductions. I don't know um, if we'll need to go into as much detail as originally planned because you guys have all served on this committee before. Um, our new member is Mayor Olson from the town of Vernon, Vernon Town in Tooele County. Um, it'll be really great to have him on. Um, Vernon is consistently on the pre-approved list. And so um, it'd be great if it's Vernon going. I am, to my knowledge, at least since I've been here, they have never been funded. So uh, it'll be great to get some fresh blood in here and hopefully welcome or uh, open up an opportunity for them to get some funding. Hey, Christy, I'm so, on I might be the only naive one here. Where's where is Vernon? It's in Twilla County. In Twilla, got it. Thank yep, you. Yep, yep, yep. Um, not very big to my knowledge, but up there. So, as a reminder, I figured we could just go through some of those documents again. You guys have all sat on this committee before, so. Um, just chime in if you have any questions or if you need any clarifications. I'm going to try and be really cognizant of the fact that I live in this world and not everybody does. And so sometimes it can be hard to give a, a brief overview of something that, that you uh, at least. Uh, here is the general high level timeline of CDBG, both funding for the applicant, and then we'll um, go through kind of our, our calendar as the regional review committee. Um, the cycle really begins in the fall, um, in August or October through October is when the AOGs are starting to plan and hold their public open houses. Um, oh, I skipped one a little bit. August and October, so before the funding cycle starts, before we hold our public open houses, we will update our rating ranking criteria as we do every, every fall um, to ensure that they're still in line with the needs and priorities of the communities. And then we'll have our how to apply workshops in October or November. Um, and applicants will start, you know, holding their public hearings, filling out their applications, and they're due in January in web grants um, to back up a little bit more. So we meet quarterly. So that's February, May, August, and November. Um, so it's uh, typically the the May and August meeting where we're looking at our rating and ranking criteria. And then our next meeting is February, which is this meeting. So we have um, our recently submitted applications. Sometimes we'll have new members on our committee. And so we'll do our introductions and our overview. Additionally, this is when the consolidated plan or the annual action plan is being um, drafted and finalized. We're we'll looking at both the initial applications today as well as the annual action plan update. Um, April and May, uh, projects are awarded and awardees are required to attend a grantee workshop hosted by DWS. And then May and June, there's some background work going on, um, compliance uh, for your contracting for um, applicants who are awarded. Um, and then they'll get an official notice to proceed. And then July is when funding becomes available. So we start you know, from August and then go till July. Um, any questions about the, the timeline or? Christy, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, John Olson, uh, I'm new to the committee. I, <laughs> I clicked on the May link. And so okay. I've been waiting for a meeting to start and <sighs> realized I was on the wrong link. So I, I'm, I'm new to this and so everything you're saying is foreign, but I'm trying to follow, so. Okay, apologies. Um, I'm sharing my screen, so I don't have a view of the audience. Um, so I'm super glad- I'm here, I'm here. Um, and I, I said in the beginning that we we're really glad to have you. Uh, you're the mayor of Vernon Town. Um, Vernon is um, consistently on the HUD's pre-approved community list, which means that you generally meet the income criteria to be eligible for 
um, community development block grant projects, which are primarily for low moderate income people. And so super happy to have you here, have some fresh eyes and um, hopefully have an opportunity to um, have Vernon be funded for the first time to my knowledge. I mean, I've only been here for five years, but it'd be great to, uh, to get Vernon more involved in this. Um, I'm gonna do a really high level overview of the timeline for you just because you, um, I'm not 100% sure when you jumped on. I, I, um, got the, so I got the timeline part. Oh, you got the timeline. Okay, great. Yep. Well then. So Christy, could I ask a question? Thank you everyone. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm trying to think about, you know, Mayor Allen and I have been uh, chit-chatting about kind of lessons learned and how we can be better representatives and, you know, get more agencies involved that are eligible and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. one of the things I was thinking in this overview is I wonder if we could put in or if it would warrant it, because I know this is kind of an overview, but it would almost seem like it would be good to... Um, like we're we're talking about applicants are required to attend you know workshops for example but in here i wonder if it would be a good reminder to the committee to say send out reminder to potential applicants to do xyz does that make sense so if you're new to the the membership it would cue each one of the members in the various areas on what to do as a representative as well does that make sense I super apologize. My internet just cut out um, almost right when you started talking. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So I called it on my phone and then I caught the last thing that you said. Sorry. Yeah, I was just thinking um, from, I was just saying that Mayor Allen and I kind of debriefed the last go around, so to speak, because it was my first time through. And, um, you know, really just trying to make sure that like, as we're working with agencies that may or may not be eligible, especially for trying to work with some of these non-traditional agencies. So, you know, if, if we're doing that, maybe some of the materials that we have, like the timeline, for example, should maybe include sort of like a timeline to-do list, like you had up there, um, you know, uh, agencies must have, um, you know, attended the DWS CDBG meeting, right, in mm -hmm. order to be eligible. And so what happens is, is down the road, everybody, like once they start to see the CDBG, they're like, oh, I'm interested, I'm interested, but they haven't done what they've needed to do in the first place. And then they mm -hmm. miss the entire thing, right? Because CDBG is so prescriptive. So I'm wondering in the timeline, if there's a way to address things like send an email out to potential agencies, right? Like things that in the timeline trigger us even as representatives or this committee on things to do so that we can try to be as proactive as possible. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. And I'm always, you know, open to how we can more um, easily and spread the word further um, as far as these go right now, you know, so on an annual basis, WFRC goes to each of the COGS and presents their eligible programs. And then we do an email blast to all communities and, and, you know, as many of those other agencies that you were mentioning that we have contact information for. And, you know, you've provided me a bunch, which I'm grateful for. Um, we, uh, we just hired a new communications manager. And so he's working with each of the programs to, to determine how we can better, you know, promulgate um, opportunities. Yeah, you know, so we're looking for opportunities and any yeah. suggestions are welcome. So let's take that COG idea. So there's no way any agency that could potentially be eligible for CDBG will ever know about the WACOG or show up to the WACOG, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and not even know from like, and I'm thinking Weber Morgan homeless providers, right? So, you know, building affordable housing, building transitional housing, like the CDBG is eligible for, um, especially outside of Ogden. So if let's say Jared and uh, Matt commissioners, sorry, I apologize, Commissioner Anderson. Um, if the commissioners said, okay, we're starting to have vagrants in Morgan County, which they are, right? And they said, we want to convert this particular place or hey we have a food bank and we want to grow the food bank because we have more of a need right they would be eligible potentially for some of this funding to fix water or sewer to line to these buildings as an example but if they had a nonprofit the nonprofit's not going to their cog 
Right. They don't, they don't typically show up. So my point is, is if on the timeline, it says you go present to each cog, then on that timeline, we should have agencies that are eligible for CDBG should be invited to those cogs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, and this is one of the reasons why we like to have, you know, boots on the ground people on our committees, you know, so anyway, I mean, you have a definitely a better connection with all of those people. And I'm not trying to, you know, place any responsibility on your shoulders by any means. Um, if you uh, continue to develop contacts and, you know, please send them to me and I'll include them on my distribution list. And at any point, you know, definitely feel free to share any and all information, but if there, whatever I can do, whatever groups you know of, um, I'm happy to include them in my correspondence and then um, maybe adding a little bit more specificity to this, um, this high level calendar to help them, you know, better plan, plan ahead. Yeah, I'm just thinking if you get hit by a truck or one of us gets hit by a truck or we're brand new, it makes sense to have, you know, that listed in this timeline so that people don't repeat the same mistakes. And I'm not talking a distribution list, like you've been great about that, but it's what you do with the distribution list that's important. And so mm -hmm. I think including that in this timeline would really help representatives. I know it would have really helped for me to understand, okay, this is what's happening. Here's the timeline of the CDBG. If you wanna make sure that agencies are eligible, you need to tell them, it doesn't matter if you don't have a project yet. If you wanna be eligible six months down the road, you better go to this. Send right. one representative, right? And, and I think that will help, I guess, increase the robustness for agencies that don't that don't know about the regular mechanics of the def, WFRC or the COGS. If, does that make sense? So I'll take my my messages offline, but I wanted to say it in front of everyone. Like if I if it's a, not a good idea, then then it's not a good idea, right? Like we could implement it in in our practice. You know, Mary Allen and I could just do that by ourselves as representatives. I wanted to kind of throw that out to the group to see if that level of specificity would be helpful in all of their areas as an example. And I get crickets. Okay. <laughs> so, do, we, do we have an error? Sorry, Sorry Alan. I, I love the idea. The thing is when, when those things are presented to the COG, uh, you know, they're usually presented like in January and February. So here's mm -hmm. all, here's everything that's available. And what needs to be done, I guess, in this case, if we send that list out, we send that out in January, February, but we all also send it out in July or August to remind mm -hmm. those people and, and say, hey, in October, November, there's a, a how-to workshop that you must attend. If you don't attend, you're not, you know, you're out for the next year. And so if we do a, if we do a mail out list with that, which I think is, is probably the easiest way to do that, but let's don't just do it in January or February. Let's let's do it, you know, in August, and yeah. remind everybody, uh, you know, because you know, and let them know, yeah, you need you have to come to this how to, you know, no if ands or buts, and if you miss that, you're you know, you're out. So, and I'm thinking of the Tuila. So Tuila, you have a local homeless council. You have nonprofits right, that do homeless services that may be eligible for this type of funding that they could really use. So, you know, that typically economic development, which the WFRC is, doesn't interact with the homeless response system. But if we list that out in January, like send a notice to the local homeless council, right, to attend the COGS in January when everybody's having this presentation, then then we've all done our due diligence, if that makes sense. So a quick thought I've got, Christy, do we have, um, I guess, a map or a boundary of everybody that is encompassed in this CDBG program? And then I, I know the, the focus of the conversation right now or in any ways is on homeless, but I, I want to make sure also that um, whoever's inside this boundary, I think it'd be nice for them to be, I'm agreeing, to be notified better. Um, I'm not a huge fan of notification 
um, as much in a meeting versus email. Email is an actual document and it's something that nobody can say they didn't get. Well, I, I sent it to you, you've got it. Um, but I think it'd be good to have the list of all those inside our, it, our boundary or however the designation is, uh, counties, cities. Um, if you wanna add homeless, you know, just the list of people that need to be notified and, and how they're notified and, and make sure they understand the process. I think that's a great, great thought. I like it. Yeah. I, yeah, I love, I love the, the reminder closer to the process start date as well. That's a great idea. Hold on. Let me and, see. And we have, and we have in our, we're going to review that today. We have in there all the cities. That are available. Okay. Sorry for that disruption, everybody. Um, I guess I will never perfect technology, no matter how hard I try. <laughs> well, I I was talking when we got cut off, but yeah, and I think you heard me that all the communities are right on that list, right in our, and I don't know which document it's in, but it's in one of those. So every community is on there that's eligible uh, to apply. And I don't know if we, I, we'd probably have a, a document a mile long if we put, everything else. So I guess that's up to us mm -hmm. and uh, to, to have another list that we could email out. And any of you that need help with any homelessness, talk to Melissa. She knows. <laughs> oh, um, goodness gracious. I mean, I'm not the homeless yeah. czar, believe me, but. Well, why would, girl, why so would she that? even knows, she even knows what's going on in Tula County. She's that, yeah. she, she reaches out that broad. So, so, uh, you know, well, I so agree that's with great. I agree with you. I think each individual community ought to be able to let their uh, individual agencies know about the program um, so we don't get a list that's a mile long. But I also agree that uh, a reminder in the early fall or, or late summer is mm -hmm. crucial because I think that uh, the thing that I always I mean, I'm new to being a mayor, but the thing that I've heard from the past is that, well, we always forget about that meeting. And once we've realized the meeting's gone, then we can't apply until the next year. And, and so I think a, a reminder of that would be awesome. You know, yeah, I maybe, sorry, I apologize, but maybe based okay. on um, what the, the two said, maybe in the timeline, we could say municipalities send um you know, information out to agencies within their city, right? Because, Absolutely. and I don't know if it's the same as last year, but with CARES, you had to have the city sponsoring it anyway. So if they're going to have to be a part of it with the agency, then they should be the ones, but we should list it, I think, in our document so that we as a committee know that that's happening proactively. Absolutely. I think that's good. Yeah. So each year when we have scheduled the how to apply workshop, I'll make a flyer for it. And I send that out at least two or three times prior to the meeting. Um, and I'll just uh, maybe take some extra time this year to, um, you know, make it more clear. I don't know everybody in the world as much as I'd like to, you know, if you know agencies that, you know, are a fit for this, for this program, please reach out to them. Please forward this to everybody. Um, just make sure we really get the word out. Yeah, I just want to be crystal clear. Christy, I'm not, you've been awesome at putting people on a distribution list. That's not what I'm referring to. What I'm referring to is in the timeline itself, because the timeline is so critical. If you miss one piece of the timeline, you're literally out, right? And so we can send things a month in advance or whatever, but if people don't understand how critical it is, they don't even know if they're eligible. So if the cities were to talk to their nonprofits as an example within their cities and they'll have a relationship with them. They'll know who they are. If we put in the timeline as a committee that each city, so maybe that's what's talked about when you go to every COG. So as you go to the COGS, maybe you educate the cities that they are going to be involved in the process, that they should have a distribution list or that you'll send it to them but I don't think it should be your job to be sending this out and us expecting that if they get something from Christy, they're going to know what the heck it is, right? They're going to know better 
based on their relationship with their municipalities in the first place. Does that make sense? And I'm yeah. thinking, especially Weber County, because most of our homeless service agencies are all in Ogden, so they're not even eligible for this money. However, if they uh, want to do something, let's say in Washington County, then Mayor Allen could say, oh, I have this relationship with Lantern House and I want to do a blah, 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 right? Or Morgan County, as an example, because they represent Morgan County. So it would be up to those municipalities then to help foster the, hey, let's use CDBG for this project, right? Because they're going to be working on those projects anyway. That's that's what I'm trying to communicate. And I, I don't want you to feel like I'm putting it on you because I don't think that that's the answer. I think it's it's creating, instead of a one to many, we have this committee and the COGS and the municipalities that need to be included in this timeline. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's that's a great point. So in our, so Christy, in our COGS, the first part of the year, you do go to all the COGS, don't you? Everybody really... Don't you? Yep, we'll do all of our programs presentations. And you all do a program presentation. That's right. I'm just trying to remember what we do in the COGS. Okay. So yep. that'd be that'd be easy to implement, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, great conversation about that. Um, okay, so Mayor Olson. Sorry, I think... I'm not trying to be annoying. Okay. So we had a conversation, but what's the action item? So what are we doing? So on my note sheet here, I have add more dates and specifics to the timeline um, to convey necessity of meeting these deadlines, such as the how to apply workshop, um, add additional feedback in the programs presentation to the COGS to encourage them to have a distribution list. Um, yeah, and then just be more clear in both the timeline and the COGS of the mandatory deadlines. On the second to last one that you just mentioned, can instead of encouraging them to have a distribution list, could it actually be a explaining to them that you, I'm trying to just make sure that at the COG when you're there, you're ex educating the municipalities even that they need to be sending out this information to eligible entities within their you know, uh, municipal and then if they have questions, obviously they could get with you or you might have a, uh, or one of us as uh, the committee members, right? For the each mm -hmm. uh, respective uh, municipality or, or COG that you're presenting at. So maybe that might be helpful and then connecting to the representatives there too. So if another mayor does have a question, they know they can either go to Mayor Allen or me or you, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Well, yep. okay. Thank I'm you. gonna add on to that again, and I don't mean to beat a dead horse either. I, I don't want to put all the responsibility on WFRC. Um, you've got great documents here. You have a list of who you're supposed to send up the documents to and who you're supposed to include. I worry, again, I worry with COG uh, as far as if you're in a meeting presenting, uh, I don't know, maybe a mayor isn't paying attention, although Mayor Allen always pays attention. But, you know, may, maybe... Uh, but if you can get it out in an email, actual document and say, I got this in a document to you, you are supposed to review all this. There's, they have no excuses. I worry that um, uh, there's too many excuse people out there with excuses of saying, well, I didn't know. Well, I didn't know. So I think if we can get, just get a good set list, send it out in an email. Here's the documents. Here's everything. You need to read it. We're not going to tell you how to do this all the way. We can give you an explanation, but here's the policies. Here's the ranking. Re read it. Um, then you know what to do and just just put a little bit of uh, uh, responsibility ownership on us would be my recommendation too. so yeah that's great and just so I un make sure that we're on, I'm understanding what you're saying you're saying send these documents in an email to the cogs to then distribute um, later on in the year in the fall uh, sorry I'm looking at a list underneath your document that says rating and ranking, and we've got a list of, I don't want to count them all, maybe 23 or 25, whatever that number is. So I would get whoever the representative is on each of those individuals, um, I, would, I would send it in an email to them. I worry about when you say COG, who, who does that include? Who does it not include? 
I, I don't know. I, I guess when you say COG, if you're meaning each of these individuals, then I would say yes, I agree with that. But um, I'm, I'm hoping that COG, a COG meeting encompasses everything we need to get. I'm not sure that that does fully. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, if we can get a representative from each of these municipalities and, and say, uh, you're the CDBG representative, I'm sending you the information. And like was mentioned before, you're responsible for getting it out. Then, then we've got, we've checked that box off and there's no excuses. But um, yeah, I, I think on top of that, going out to a COD meeting and presenting is absolutely phenomenal. It's great for us to hear. But again, I've been to many COD meetings where some mayors aren't there or some representation isn't there that might not um, fully cover. So, sure. <clears throat> okay. Great, thank you guys for that discussion. Um, let us move on to the rating and ranking criteria. Mayor Olson, I think this will help um, give up an overview of CDBG and what it is and kind of some of its limitations and what it can fund. Um, so again, this rating and ranking criteria is updated by this group each fall, typically in the May and August meetings. Um, and it should reflect the regional priorities and for for the upcoming um, year. And it also goes through some of the policies and procedures um, that regulate the program. Um, so it is a, a program for low to moderate income communities. Um, it's supposed to provide um, or promote a better living, more suitable living environment to people within those communities. So it can um, fund capital infrastructure projects as well as, um, provide funding for nonprofits, but there is a limitation on that. We are only eligible to spend up to 15% of our overall budget on those types of projects. Um, the minimum grant amount is 30,000 per year, um, just because the cost of administration on anything less than that kind of makes it not worthwhile um, as far as funding goes. Um, WFRC is one of the few, if not the only a AOG that allows multi-year grants um, so if you are applying for a multi-year grant, you are allowed to apply for 200,000 per year for up to two years. Um, for a single year project, you can apply for up to 250,000. Um, we recently added that um, a single entity may not receive more than 250,000 in one funding cycle. Um, in the past, we had communities applying for, it, the limit was always 250,000, but they would apply for multiple projects and end up getting you know, the majority of our funding for a year. So now um, you can have multiple projects so long as the total of those projects does not exceed 250,000. Um, so the rating and ranking, which we haven't got to yet, but is this document um, is pretty straightforward. It's objective, um, it's very clear and transparent. Um, so each application is, is scored at the beginning of each year. And then we just start from the top and move down as far as available funding goes. Um, we are able to partially fund projects if we do have money left over after going through that list, we are able to go back. Um, if there was a multi-year ask or something like that, we can give additional funding, even if it exceeds 250,000 to meet those um, needs and spend all of our money. However, um, something that we've talked about in years past is a revolving loan fund. Um, you know, none of us, to my knowledge, are experts on that. And so we have um, reserved the right to use up to $20,000 on a feasibility study of a revolving loan fund should we have that money left over after fully funding all of the asks. Um, an applicant must spend down at least 50% of prior year funding to be eligible for the next year funding. Um, and some of these are WFRC policies and some of these are state policies and some of these are HUD policies. So um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. Um, Number seven is kind of what we were talking about before, and this is actually a, um, either a state or a federal requirement that uh, to be eligible for funding, you must attend the How to Apply workshop in the fall. Only cities and counties are eligible to receive CDBG funding. So as we mentioned before with those other applicants, nonprofits and such um, housing authorities, you must be a sub applicant to receive funding that way. So you have to have a city the city or county that you're located in sponsor you, which basically means that um, 
they hold the contract and any responsibility should anything you know go wrong with the project. Um, but essentially the funds are just passing through them to the actual sub applicant. Christy, can I just jump in? Sorry, I apologize. And I'm eating no, my no. lunch, so I turned my video off. So I apologize too. But um, Commissioner Anderson, I just wanted you to know that the Weber Housing Authority and the Ogden Housing Authority serve Morgan County. So if you had any projects for affordable housing that you wanted to use CDBG funding for, they would be your agencies and organizations. So I think there's a lot of, to the point of the homeless response system, right? They're not homeless service providers, they're housing providers, but I'm not sure you as a commissioner even knew that. Does that make sense? He may be gone. I'll follow up with him later. Okay. Okay, no problem. Um, and then again, no more than 15% of the state's yearly allocation of funds may be expended for public service projects. And I know we've had some confusion around the term public service projects, but just trying to keep consistent with you know, the way that DWS has it just to avoid confusion. That is um, not a WFRC regulation. Um, it goes into emergency projects. Um, that would be, you know, like if there was a fire or an earthquake or something like that, we haven't run into that um, in our region or in our state, as far as I know. <clears throat> so then we move into the rating and ranking criteria. Um, this goes into, you know, if there's a tie, how will the tie be decided? Um, just kind of some, some additional details. Um, again, because this is updated in the fall, this will be updated the, this fall. So some of this information is already outdated. Um, so the membership will have to be updated in the fall, um, obviously. Um, and then we set aside 50,000 each year for the admin and planning of the program. So I don't know, I'll, I'll read the room and see um, how much you guys want to go into detail about the rating and ranking criteria. We can do a high level, just read what they are. Again, we'll review and edit this in May and August. And so I don't know um, how much detail you guys want to go into right now. Um, Lance, you're our chair and Mayor Allen, you're our vice chair. I could look to you guys for your opinions or uh, Mayor Olson, since you're um, new to the committee, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. I know it's, I'm throwing so much information at you right now, but, um, you know, the are more. All, are, are all of our meetings going to be over Zoom? Or are we going to ever meet face to face? I we think we'll eventually be meeting face to face. Because <laughs> that's a lot. You can get a lot more out of a meeting when you can sit around and look at documents. I know, and I know it's kind of um, annoying that it's over the lunch hour, but the reason that is, is because when we do meet in person, we, I bring lunch for everyone. And so try and bribe people into oh, okay. coming and hanging out. <laughs> Yay. Play in, I think the rating and rate, I think this is very clear cut and objective and I think it works really, really well. So I don't think we need to deep dive it. Perfect. Okay. Hey, I got a question on this, Christy, on the rating. Um, is any of this state um, required or mandated, or is all of this up to this committee? Um, there's some flexibility, and then there's some that are the state. Like, for example, this number one is completely um, scored by the state. They're the ones who manage the contracts, and so they're the ones who can determine, you know, the answers to these questions. Um, there's other things that are not um, mandated by the state that we do, um, but some of them are like the moderate income housing plan is a requirement by the state. Um, you know, percentage so, of match we do on our own. It's really right. pick and choose. I guess for the future, and I agree with Melissa, I don't think we need to go into detail on this, but I just think for the future, it'd be good for us to see what numbers we can adjust and what numbers we can't. So mm -hmm. definitely. Yep. And we'll, we'll deep dive into that. Um, in our next meeting probably. And hopefully by May, we'll be able to meet in person. Fingers crossed, we were hoping we would be meeting in person already, but such is life. Um, 
and then I included the bylaws for you. I don't think that we really need to go um, into detail on this either. We revised them in 2018. Um, it basically outlines the membership of this committee, which is two members from each of our participating counties, one elected official, one staff person. Um, we need to have four people present to be a quorum. Um, each term is two years uh, with no limit on terms, um, things like that. The chair and vice chair also serve two, two, uh, two year terms, also no limit on that. We did pick our um, chair and vice chair at the beginning of last year, which was the next thing on our agenda. So as a reminder, um, Lance is our chair and Mayor Ellen is our vice chair. Uh, we meet every third Tuesday. Um, that is that is essentially the bylaws. They're there for your review if you have any questions, but I don't think we need to get into that right now. We meet every third Tuesday? Every third Tuesday every once a quarter. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <That's what laughs> you're like, oh my gosh, I was told this one would be that big of a <laughs> <laughs> You thought you'd been duped. Nope, sorry. Yeah. Every third Tuesday, every quarter. All right. Okay, so that was really high level introductions. Um, if anyone has any questions, Mayor Olson, if you have any questions, if you'd like to spend more time offline, happy to answer any questions. Um, uh, yeah, that'd be great. I'll, I can find a time to get with you. Are all of these uh, documents going to be given to us on uh, that you got that you're sharing with us now? Will they be sent out in so that we can have those? I'm wondering if I have your correct email address. Um, I, I've sent you a couple of emails. Um, let me check. I've been, what I've I been have. getting them. So you have. Yeah, I mean, I've got the notification for this meeting and stuff, so I'm okay. sure. You're... I'll have to check that it's the right email because I did send all these documents, but let me just double check. I may um, not. I'll have... them. There was a bunch of stuff that came, and I just didn't. I may not have opened the right stuff. So. Okay. I yep. Can... I will make sure you have them. All so right. Mayor, thank you. So, Mayor, real quick, on February, looks like February eighth, um, these documents were sent. So, if you want to look back on that date, you might. Have okay, that. I'll I'll take a look, and if not, I'll let Christy know. I have one more comment. <clears throat> Sorry, um, more lessons learned the last time through because um, there was a lot of lessons learned. <laughs> so um, timeline again. I wonder if there could be any way we could put in uh, specificity specific to say um, engineering review. Remember when we worked with uh, the Department of Workforce Services and they were like, you have to allow for at least 60 days minimum if you're ever going to right? so every time we jumped through a hoop, it was like another barrier that yet we didn't know about. And so I think in the timeline, if we had like no kidding dates, right, you have to attend this, you have to have your engineering, whatever, whatever done by DWS, right? Because you couldn't have just any engineering review. Sorry, guys, I don't even know what it's called, but <laughs> you know, what I'm, the EI, whatever, Right, but right. it can't be even done by your own engineers. It has to be done by DWS. I think having that specificity in the timeline, like the drop dead date, you have to have it in by this date would be super important for the timeline on projects. That's just my two cents, but you know, like I know uh, Mary Allen, um, I know that your CDBG person is like right on top of things. So I even wonder if maybe she she might be able to provide a, a few of those types of nuances, because I think those are the things that are going to frustrate people, right? And those are going to be the things that end up having these projects not go through. Mm -hmm. All right, let me, yeah. let me just, Christy, can I say something is, absolutely. Have, have, have we really had any problems with anything like that, except for last year when, when we received all that COVID money, when, you, when Melissa and I were going crazy and so yep. isn't it, is it pretty cut? Is it pretty clear right now? And is it easy to meet those deadlines? It was just a, it was just a strange thing last year when we received all that COVID money. That just yep. messed everything. That was a mess. Yep, that's correct. And it, it was difficult for me because in our normal CDBG funding, you know, once the projects are awarded, their complete control is handed over to the state and they deal with all the contracting, all the engineering, all the, all the, all the EIS, everything like that. And so 
when they were trying to loop me in, um, you know, on the fly, it, it was, it was, you know, I felt for the grantees because I was like, I have no idea, like all these deadlines and everything like that. But yeah. So once they're awarded, the DWS holds a grantee workshop that takes place in May and they, you know, go through all so those the, deadlines, all those regulations. The funding like last year was just done in reverse order then because <laughs> of the type of funding it was? It, no, it, it was um, on a crazy timeline and they had to do, you know, all those, all those things in a much shorter time. And I just, there wasn't a very good communication, you know, between the federal government, the state governments, the local governments all working together to try and figure out the timeline, the deadlines, the roles and responsibilities of everyone. And so I think there was a lot of confusion around communicating what those what those deadlines were, what needed to be done, um, because only for that money was there an expectation for me to help provide those documents when in a regular cycle, once the award is made, it's completely handed over from me to DWS and they deal with all of that. So basically, once the award's made, let, like let's take Youth Futures, for example, right? They had the land or whatever. What, what I hear you saying is that in the normal cycle, if they, they would have had to gone to the workshop, right? And then they would fill out the application for this group to review. We would rate, rate and rank it. And they wouldn't have to have the engineering spec or anything like that. Then once we awarded it as a regional committee, it would go through whatever process that is, and I can't remember it, but of it. So you're saying that the engineering wouldn't even happen until it got to the state. So they would have to have an engineering estimate, but after it's awarded and handed over to DWS is when they go through the official bid process to award an engineer the project who would then come back with the exact specification. So the weird thing is, that you're, I think, referring to is that in a funding cycle, you cannot have the engineer estimate who provided you the estimate for your application is not allowed to do, actually do the project. So once you're awarded, you then have to find a different engineering firm and put it out for a proper bid through the state's procurement policy using Davis-Bacon all of that and they have to get in additional bids that meet all of DWS or all of the HUD requirements. Right, but what and we then, found out is that DWS in order to award the contract had to do the engineering themselves. And they said that that requires at least 60 days minimum. So if somebody wanted to be awarded a contract, now that could be just that money last year and I could be confused because it's just that money or that funding source but they wanted it done like in advance x number of days in advance because they have all sorts of like they have an entire state to coordinate so I'm just talking about those timelines I think those pieces like whatever those requirements are I think we need to list those in the timeline I think they're absolutely critical okay I will, um, I'll look at some stuff and I'll send them to you just offline so that we can okay. try and, Move on. and bust yeah. through a little bit and just make sure we're on the same And then the only other thing is I think you should send it to Jen Domenici and say, what would you include DWS? I would like kind of to Jared's or Commissioner Anderson's point, hold, her, hold them accountable to actually write out what they're expecting. And if they don't, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I think that would be really important for for us to send that to her and say, okay, what do you think needs to be included in this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we might be able to just look also at the handbook at their that they hand out, but they don't hand it out until March or, or sorry, May or April, whenever they host their thing. So maybe providing that on the front end will help applicants kind of be prepared before they go into that meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have the, what did everyone have a chance? Oh, that's why it's down here. I have, uh, screens in different formats. So I have to do 
Did everyone get a chance to look at the minutes? Mayor Olson, I know you weren't able to attend, so. Well, I didn't have a chance to look at them, but. <laughs> Which is totally fine. I, but I did find, but I did find the document, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rochelle, were you saying something? I reviewed them. I make the motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Awesome. So everybody is for, is anybody opposed? Perfect. So hey, Christy, you want to go back to number two, chair and vice chair appointments? We skipped over those. Oh, that was we really don't have to do that, do we? Yeah, that was more of just like a FYI yeah. reminder. Because Lance is still the chair. <coughs> Correct. For, for another year. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, should we just let Lance jump in and, and continue with the rest of the uh, agenda? That'd be great. Okay, Lance, can you? Sure, yeah. So let's see, where are we at? Well, we did the minutes, so we're- Yeah, so let's do uh, the project app. Well, are we gonna review the action plan next? These Zoom meetings, I just kind of, it's easier to just have one person run it, so. Uh, oh, okay, if, if you have Christy run it, that, I don't- if, if I Christy, know. you'll just keep going down it, and that'd be good. Sure. Um, so, next we have the annual action plan. Um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to review it. There have been some updates made since I sent it out. Um, so I'll um, draw your attention to that, but um, we'll just run through it kind of at a high level. And then if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to just shout them out. Um, so as a refresh, Mayor Olson, everyone, um, every five years we're required to do a consolidated plan. Um, and that looks, you know, back at the last five years and then forward to the next five years. What did you accomplish? What are you looking to accomplish? And so um, we try to strike a balance between, you know, dreaming big and, and having realistic, realistic expectations. Um, you know, we'd love to solve homelessness, but, you know, there's restrictions on us that don't allow us to, to do certain activities. And so we really look at, um, you know, what do we want to change in our, in our priorities and our rating and ranking priorities? priorities that could help influence um, a specific outcome. For example, last year we moved LMI housing activities to our number one priority um, to give more points to those, those projects. Um, but also what are the applications that we receive on an annual basis? That's clearly reflecting a need and a priority in our, in our region and that's typically infrastructure. So keeping that in mind um, as we look forward to our goals. Um, so every year we update the population of all the communities within our region that are eligible for um, a refresh. Uh, Morgan County, Tula County, and Weber County are all eligible in our program um, with the exception of Ogden City. So when we look at Weber County's population, we take the um, whole population and we exclude Ogden City. Um, Can I interject they, there, Christy? Absolutely. Uh, that list right there of those cities, Jared, you were talking about uh, the COGS. Every one of those communities is representing the COG. Now, whether they're there every month, it, you know, it's it's iffy, but I, I imagine it's probably a 90, about 90% 90 uh, attendance on those at that, the Weaver COG. So uh, we do get good representation. So I hope those those mayors or those council members would uh, would take all this information and pass it along, so. Um, yep, thank you for that. So public participation begins with the how to apply workshop. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the time, I'm trying to be cognizant and respectful of all of your guys' time. Um, and also, you know, just kind of high level summarize what is here. This is outlining the um, public engagement piece of the um, annual action plan and the consolidated plan. Both are put out to a 30 day public comment period public open house is hosted each year so that, um, you know, anyone has ample opportunity to provide input for 30 days or at a public open house. The public open house already took place this year. No comments were received. Um, the 30 days 
is open um, until uh, February 18th. Um, if you guys have any additional comments, you know, anytime in the next however long before I send it to the state, which will be in March, the beginning of March, feel free to comment. Um, I, I don't know uh, if you were able to look this over before our meeting, but um, so these, this kind of outlines the applications that were received this year and the goals that they could help us to meet. Um, so again, a lot of, a lot of um, assistance in public facility and infrastructures other than housing. However, we did get some applications that would address housing. Um, so that's these 52 households and we'll go over that in just a moment. Um, I apologize, we might go a little bit over time um, unless you guys want to, um, you know, me to summarize the rest of this in a meeting, I'm happy to do whatever is, works best for, for you guys. But um, so th these are the goals that um, we have the potential to hit with this next funding cycle. These are the, um, again, the communities that applied um, and the projects that they applied for. Um, here's one thing that was um, updated since, um, since I sent it out to you guys. When I originally sent it out, um, this number, the 2022 allocation was lower. I just got word today that we went from potentially receiving 978,000 to, um, 1,050,000 just about. So that's good news for us. I'll just update this really quick. So we had um, $71,000 reallocated to us from the state. Um, we do have a lot of match that's being met with our applications this year. Total project cost of all um, seven applications was four and a half million dollars. Um, and a lot of that is in match. Um, however, I will note that one of those projects is the majority of the match. And so um, if that project is funded, that's, that'll you know more than triple our, our money, stretch it even further. But if it is not funded, that number will be a lot less. Um, method of distribution, you guys are familiar with that. Um, that's you know the rating and ranking and us scoring them. Um, updating the, the rating and ranking each year. So that, um, that doesn't change uh, year over year. Um, so really the things that we went over already are the things that change year over year. And then the, um, the regional capital investment plan, which is this last page, that is all of the potential projects that may be funded this year. And again, we are planning on doing a high level overview of the applied for projects. So we don't need to go uh, talking about that right this moment, but does anyone have any questions, comments about the annual action plan? I know that was super duper quick. And again, if you feel like you'd like to have more discussion, more time to provide input, I'm happy to summarize in an email and get this out to you. It is one o'clock right now. No one has any comments. Let's uh, have a motion to approve. I move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thanks so much. Okay, last but certainly not least, the big reveal. These are the project applications received this year. So, um, in including, we did have one multi-year award awarded last, last year, and they were able to spend more than the $200,000 ask. So now we owe them a balance of 185,000. So I'll go over these. Um, Relatively quickly, Weber Housing Authority and Weber County applied for a property acquisition for some, um, and Melissa is probably more in the know about this than I am, um, but she's also more aware than most about the um, incredibly difficult to navigate nuances of a property acquisition. Um, this was the project I was referring to with the extremely high match. 
Um, however, that match does not cover the entirety of the project. They are waiting for other grant applications and um, DWS does not like that. Is this the North Ogden? Um, it's in, so they haven't secured or a Harrisville? location yet, which as you know, they're not allowed to, but they're the Pleasant View. Okay. One, I believe. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make yeah. sure I was on the right one. Yep. Yep. So they're looking to um, acquire a property and have um, tr a transitional housing facility for people um, coming out of incarceration. Um, and so that would be for both of them and their families to live together, be reacquainted, um, have, have treatment, and then um, help them get placed in a more permanent housing situation. The Tooele Housing Authority has applied with Tooele City for home buyer assistance. That's pretty straightforward. Um, they would provide up to $10,000 for low-income people for um, down payment on their first home. They applied for $200,000. Um, this is something I have to double check with the state with. If, they, um, if the housing authority falls under the blanket of only 15% of funding, if that is the case, um, they would be awarded $157,000 um, for two years because they applied for a multi-year project. Uh, if it doesn't fall under that blanket, then they would get the two full, the full 200,000 for those two years. Um, Washington Terrace is applied for advanced metering infrastructure. Um, Wendover, this is their fifth phase of the Pilot Peak water line. Um, it's easy for them to get funding as they, it's a community-wide project and they're pre-approved in the LMI communities list. Um, Uinta City has also applied for a water project. Washington Terrace also applied for fire equipment and Tooele City applied for sewer improvements. So if you can see on the right-hand side is kind of a running balance of these projects. Um, I'm gonna work you know, with DWS on this Weber housing project, like I said, and I, I made the applicant aware of the difficulty with a property acquisition, particularly when not all of the money is committed. Um, that's, you know, kind of one of HUD's, uh, HUD's no negotiation. We need all funds committed. Um, so unfortunately, you know, this one's kind of iffy. And so if we were to put zero in that funding, we would be nearly able to fully fund the rest of the projects, which is super exciting. Um, and then we would just need to ask Tool City if they would be willing to take, you know, 61,000 instead of their requested 232,000. So Christy, um, in, in that, so for the housing authority, line eight, um, if they know they're not gonna get that match, are, does this committee need to maybe give them a deadline so that we know, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, do, do they need to have a deadline that they have that match by so that we can make good decisions with the rest of the funding? Do, do you know what I mean? Um, so the hard part is, is they don't know when they're going to get that match. As far as I know, um, they, so they do have 3 million secured, but their total right. project cost is like 7 million or 11 million or something like that. And right. so yeah. this is one that I need to work closely with DWS and the Weber housing or sorry, the, yeah, the Weber housing authority, um, with, because there was talks about being able to do a smaller project, depending on whether they get the like depending on which property they buy, right? So right, right, and and I guess that's kind of my point is um, the three million is through a mental health uh, award, right? Through federal awards, which is great, but the other funding that they're trying to demonstrate match on, um, you know, so it's in all of these different uh, areas, right? And so, for example, one area is social services appropriations, which they're very last on the list. So it's likely they're probably not going to get that funding. So if if they're not able to get this total match, I just want to make sure that for the committee itself that we've made sure that like obviously I want to work with them and we want to get as much as we can, but I also want to make sure that the committee feels comfortable saying, okay, here's your drop dead date, so that we know what's best to do for the other applicants as well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't it wanna, does. As a, a Weber County, so to speak, um, I want to definitely support Weber Housing Authority, but I also don't want to 
tick everybody else off, right? Waiting, because right. that's not fair either. So I right. just want to do the fair thing with integrity. And so that's kind of my question. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, and I also want to point out that you'll notice that the E column is blank. That is the state portion of the scoring. And so um, I haven't had my meeting with them yet. So these scores aren't set in stone. You know, they could change ever so slightly based on their scoring. And I was supposed to meet with them tomorrow, but um, due to a funeral, that meeting was pushed back about um, a week and a half. So that will be a question that I think will be better answered after I meet with DWS and talk um, through those options. And then I will 100% um, after I have that meeting with them, touch circle back with you guys, let you guys know the outcome of that meeting. Um, and if we have any options, what those options are so that, um, you know, they did score the highest. So if that is an eligible project, then it's only fair that they receive the funding. But um, if because of HUD and DWS guidelines, they're eliminated, then, um, you know, we'll just have to push the funding down to the bottom. Does that make sense? Okay, I know that was a incredibly dense meeting and I threw a lot of stuff and we're a little bit over time and I apologize for that. Um, so I'm going to work on the timeline, work on some additional information and specifics that we could put on the website to um, help applicants, um, also help grantees. I'll throw that, um, I'll, I'll share that grantee timeline with you so that people can know what's coming down the pipeline to be best prepared. Um, and then after I meet with DWS, I'll um, update the spreadsheet and summarize our meeting that we had. And I'll send that back to you guys with the, the final list of, of recommended um, funds. And we'll look forward to, you know, and, you know, if you guys want to discuss anything, um, but before our next meeting, I'm always here for that. Um, but if not, our next meeting will be May 18th. And fingers crossed. Maybe we can meet in person, get some lunch. Yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know, all the money we've saved, we'll go to like oh, Lakai there, or something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you officially adjourn the meeting? Or thank you, and, and nice to meet everybody. And I'll yes, make a motion if we need an, an adjournment. Let's do it just to be rather safe than sorry. So moved. I second the motion. Motion passed. All Good right. Good to see you guys. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.